I look at Einstein's stupidity in his brain. The way that Einstein's supporters represent Einstein is as a super genius. And whenever there are th signs for th things like stupidity in him, they try to twist things around and it be then it suddenly becomes signs of being a super genius. Right. As per my last talk, Einstein didn't know what he was talking about. Is it that link? Uh, there it is. Einstein didn't know what he was talking about. They tried to present it as a sort of joke that Einstein did not know what he was talking about for relativity. It is like they got a stupid person to talk about things he didn't understand, then pretend he was a genius. So, in this talk I will now be looking at uh, the main things. I'll be looking at uh, James May's Things You Need to Know Series 2, Episode 1 on Einstein. A short bit on that. And then I'll be looking at how Einstein's uh, brain worked, where they looked at Einstein's brain. Right. So, we get on to that now then. How uh, was that? James May. As a cobbler. Germany, 1879. Mr. and Mrs. Einstein gaze upon their newborn baby, concerned about his large, misshapen head. So, this is a silly, silly cartoon representation of uh, Einstein's parents. And that's supposed to be Einstein. And I think they're pointing out this Einstein had an enormous abnormal uh, sized brain head sorry when he was a child and they were worried about it 79 Mr. and Mrs. Einstein gaze upon their newborn baby concerned about his large misshapen head they needn't have worried this head contained one of the greatest brains in history so straight on to their publicity, public relations thing, saying how wonderful Einstein's brain is. So we start off with parents wor worrying about the size of the head and next minute, don't worry, he's a genius. Misshapen head, they needn't have worried. This head contained one of the greatest brains in history. But as a young boy, little Albert was slow to talk. The so, little Albert is slow to talk. And that's, that's a sign of being stupid, but suddenly this is going to become a sign that he's a genius. One of the greatest brains in history. But as a young boy, little Albert was slow to talk. The maid even called him the dopey one. So his parents took him to see a doctor. It turned out he just preferred speaking in complete sentences. Einstein as a young boy. So, some reason Einstein wanted to talk in complete sentences. That's, that sounds rather weird because normal development you, you just have a few words. And so he wants to jump over just mention a few words and start talking in complete sentences. This is weird. Just weird. Why would a child to be like that? But they're trying to make out it's a sign of genius. Is he a doctor? It turned out he just preferred speaking in complete sentences. Einstein, as a young boy, started to, to uh, query the, the world he was living in. He was fascinated by um, natural phenomena. One of these was when he was given a compass at the age of five, and he was mesmerized by the, the needle that would move around and these mysterious forces that were causing it to move. 
But the other thing that he loved was his geometry book, which he was given when he was 12. He devoured this book. His understanding um, of, say, uh, science was perhaps different to most other um, uh, children. You'd think that for a budding genius like young Einstein, school would be an absolute doddle. But you'd be wrong. Einstein certainly wasn't a dummy in the classroom, but he didn't like being told what to do, which often got him in trouble with his teachers. Right. So they're trying to make out that Einstein was not a dummy at school, but he didn't get on with his teachers, and not getting on with your teachers, well, the teachers were naturally assuming you're stupid. So they're trying to cover up this teacher's probably thinking he's stupid. Oh. Einstein certainly wasn't a dummy in the classroom, but he didn't like being told what to do, which often got him in trouble with his teachers. In fact, he called the schools barracks and the teachers lieutenants. To make matters worse, when Einstein was just 15 years old, his entire family moved to Italy, leaving him behind in Munich. So he got himself a doctor's note, and he quit school more than a year early. Genius. Without a single... So... So, engaging in this bogus activity suddenly makes him a genius. What a load, really. Legally exempt from attention at school is supposed to be the certificate he managed to hoax. Genius. Indeed. Her family moved to Italy, leaving him behind in Munich. So he got himself a doctor's note and he quit school more than a year early. Genius. Without a single qualification to his name, Private Einstein became a teenage... I don't understand, don't understand that. They're calling him Private Einstein? What, the, what does that mean? Don't think he was in the army. School more than a year early. Genius. Without a single qualification to his name, Private Einstein became a teenage high school dropout. He also flunked... He became a high school dropout, which is indicating of being stupid. School more than a year early. Genius. Without a single qualification to his name, Private Einstein became a teenage high school dropout. Didn't have any single qualification to his name. Stupid. He also flunked the entrance exam to Zurich Polytech, but tried again at... Flunked it, was stupid. Now he's going to say they he passed second time he tried. He also flunked the entrance exam to Zurich Polytech, but tried again at 17 and aced it. Only to become a bit of a rebel skipping classes and arguing with teachers. Ah. Ah. Ar arguing with teachers? Well, the teachers are going to think you're stupid again. So, he's not doing very well at this time. But of course they're going to twist all that around. You become a bit of a rebel, skipping classes and arguing with teachers. Ah. Ah. You would be not paying attention. You would be... Um, yeah. He said, not paying attention. That's stupid again. skipping classes and arguing with teachers. You would be not paying attention, you would be um, uh, questioning some of the things that teachers would be telling him. You know, like uh, uh, rules and that doesn't go down well uh, in schools. That still doesn't, Harold. <laughs> yeah, doesn't go down well, teachers. Teachers are thinking you're stupid. He's just not doing very well. Questioning some of the things that teachers would be telling him, you know, like uh, uh, rules and that doesn't go down well uh, in schools. That still doesn't, <laughs> or at least it didn't when I was at school. One professor was so miffed by Einstein's disobedience that he did his best to sabotage his academic career, which is why at the age. So, one of them was so unimpressed with Einstein, they were probably saying to everybody, "He's stupid." And that sort of like sabotages your career. Go down well 
in schools. That still doesn't, or at least it didn't when I was in school. One professor was so miffed by Einstein's disobedience that he did his best to sabotage his academic career. Which is why, at the age of 22, Einstein was unemployed with no prospects and a pregnant girlfriend. So, no prospects. And everybody's thought he's stupid up to now, really. And girlfriend. <sighs> Luckily, he landed a junior post at the Swiss Patent Office in Bern, doing the sort of work he referred to as his cobbler's trade. So no, Einstein didn't spend seven years mending stilettos, but he did do plenty of what he loved best, thinking. In fact, during his years at the patent office, this humble clerk did some of the finest thinking in the entire history of science, which begs the question, what was Einstein's big idea? So, Einstein suddenly turned it around at the patent office suddenly had, so they had this big idea and this big idea is big idea really ideas is supposed to what's changed everything in physics imagine you're chasing after a bus it's doing 30 miles an hour but you only manage 29 the bus is faster than you by one mile an hour speed up just a bit and you'll catch it but if the bus were a beam of light then no matter how much you speed up, it's always faster than you by the same amount. The speed of light. This doesn't seem to make much sense. But by the start of the 20th century... Note the words, this did not seem to make much sense. Go back to it. After the silly cartoon. Same amount. The speed of light. This doesn't seem to make much sense. So we've got something which doesn't make much sense. And if we uh, if we go back to my videos, this one. The talk there on the. Uh, and my talk I dealt with the lie on which Einstein's relativity is built built, and basically uh, this, this silly cartoon it's doing 30 miles an hour but you only manage 20 this silly miles. cartoon is uh, really based on something which is false so you come into or something which is oh it doesn't make sense and it's built on something which is false the bus is faster than you by one mile an hour speed up just a bit and you'll catch it but if the bus were a beam of light then no matter how much you speed up it's always faster than you by the same amount the speed of light this doesn't seem to make much sense does not make much sense and also and it is built on something which is false. This is what Einstein has given us. But by the start of the 20th century, experiments had shown that it was true. What on earth was going oh, on? They're saying it's true and that is false. As I explained in my video about the lie upon which Einstein's relativity is built, they are making a false claim about experiment. no matter whether you're moving towards it or moving away from it, you will always perceive light to be moving at the same speed. That's false. They've never done that, and what, so what they had to do was define light speed as constant. So, it's just saying something which is false. It's always 300,000 kilometres per second, or thereabouts. And this is a little bit odd, it's not what we experience. She's saying it a little bit odd. It's also false, but she believes it. In everyday life. That flies in the face of common sense. Um, yeah, and they're saying it flies in the face of common sense. It's false and it flies in the face of common sense. And that sounds like the statement of a lunatic almost. Yeah. I mean, it 
a statement of a lunatic. So this is what Einstein has given us. He's given us a statement of a lunatic. That flies in the face of common sense. Common I mean, that sense. sounds like the statement of a lunatic almost. I mean lunatic. it really is a ridiculous thing to suggest. It took one of Einstein's famous thought experiments to sort it out. No, didn't sort it out. Einstein came up with a thought experiment. It didn't sort it out, just made it into a bigger mess. The whole thing is based on a lie. It's a lie told about the experiments and it leads you to build something up which is completely nonsense. And Einstein there, cheerful, happy away. It's like he's joking to us. He's built something up which is based on nonsense. I mean, it really is a ridiculous thing to suggest. Ridiculous. It took one of Einstein's famous thought experiments to sort it out. Let's say Mr. and Mrs. Einstein each have identical relativity clocks. These super accurate timepieces work by bouncing a photon of light between two mirrors a few feet apart. Now, if Albert hurtles past at near the speed of light, Mrs. Einstein would say that his photon has to travel much further between ticks than hers. So, to keep the clocks ticking together, his photon would have to speed up. He said photon would have to speed up. And so that means the light was going faster. Of course that is uh, what you would get from Newtonian physics but suddenly they're going to twist it around and it's not going to be that, it's going to be some nonsense about time being elastic and so forth. So, to keep the clocks ticking together his photon would have to speed up. Except we already know that light doesn't do that. Yeah, they're saying light doesn't do that and they say it's talking nonsense because there's no experiment uh, actually shown that, as I've explained in the lie upon which Einstein's relativity is built. Dub. Except we already know that light doesn't do that. Einstein reasoned that time itself, not light, changes speed. No, he's saying time itself changes speed, which is nonsense. Speed is really distance travel divided by time taken and now suddenly time is a sp is uh, dependent upon a speed so, it's, so you've got some sort of time uh, changing with respect to some other time it's, it's just falling into nonsense time itself not light changes speed he simply took this idea seriously that the speed of light is constant. Took this idea seriously and basically the idea which is all built upon is nonsense. But he took it seriously. Not light changes speed. He simply took this idea seriously that the speed of light is constant and that means that the notion, the very notion of what space is and what time is has to give. So this... So completely messes up our understanding of space and time because he took an idea of, of light speed being constant and he took that idea of being serious and it's really just nonsense. The notion of what space is and what time is has to give. So this meant that time itself was no longer absolute, it had to be relative and this is the big breakthrough that Einstein made. Big breakthrough, but it's really just nonsense. Absolute, it had to be relative. And this is the big breakthrough that Einstein made. This fundamental shift in the way we see the universe meant that different clocks could show different times and still be right. Nonsense. But that's what you got built on a lie, Einstein building on nonsense. Relative to Mrs. Einstein, Albert's clock ticks slower than hers. The faster he goes, the slower it ticks, until at the speed of light, it would stop altogether. Bingo, 
Einstein had shown how nothing travels faster than light. No, he hadn't shown how nothing travels faster than light. It's just nonsense. What what experiment are you doing to show nothing travels faster than light? He's done nothing like that. All he's done is made up some nonsense about uh, playing around with clocks. So once again, they like to misrepresent things. They like to pretend they've got some sort of evidence for it, and they haven't. Altogether, bingo. Einstein had shown how nothing travels faster than light. Not even celebrity gossip. Einstein published his universe-shattering theory in 1905, closely followed by a small postscript. This contained a tiny little equation, one that just about everybody knows, but almost no one fully understands. Nobody fully understands. Once again, theory that nobody understands, and then blatantly shoving it in your face. The equation I talked about is course E equals MC squared. And you, of course, can argue with people about what that is supposed to mean. So, what does E equals MC squared actually mean? The world's most famous equation... Right, so I think we could leave it there. It would be a diversion to suddenly go into all the problems with that equation. And the next thing to look at is Einstein's brain. This is a program uh, about having looking looking at Einstein's brain. After Einstein died, they kept the brain to study. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of history, died in 1955. Just hours after his death, his brain was gone. This is the story of the bizarre afterlife journeys of Albert Einstein's brain. The mysterious case of the man accused of taking it and of how it was finally tracked down. There it was. This is the brain that changed everything. In the afterlife, specialists would put Einstein's brain to the test. What did they discover? Is Einstein's brain truly unique? Two scientists set out to solve the great brain mystery and whether it can reveal secrets of genius. Does intelligence reside in one and a quarter kilos of fatty tissue? Most of this program is just waffle. If you want to, you can go and watch it fully yourself. So I'm just going to show some of the highlights. This is, I think, the surgeon associated the brain. And that's how you remove it. It's standard procedure to remove, examine, and return a brain to the body. But Dr. Harvey had a different plan. He would not return this organ to its owner. Harvey confesses Einstein's son only read about the brain's removal in a newspaper the next day. He was very upset. But to avoid any publicity, he and Otto Nathan did not press for its return. Harvey got to keep the brain, but with it came notoriety. His pleas that he was preserving it for science did little to stem outrage. There was a lot of controversy at the time. There were some people who thought I was a little sacrilegious working on Einstein. Was Thomas Harvey saving mankind's greatest brain? or committing the grave robbing crime of the century. Supposed to be Einstein. As a great physicist. Representation. As a child, his passion was music, not physics. So his passion was music, not physics, and suddenly he's gonna swap over from music to physics. Robbing crime of the century. Uh. Einstein's destiny as a great physicist was not obvious. As a child, his passion was music, not physics. I often think in music. 
I live my day to be in music. If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. So this is supposed to be a representation of Einstein and in this representation he's saying that he likes music and that's the way he so say thinks and if he's thinking about physics in terms of music probably he's just getting it all messed up inside his head. We go back to it again. As a child, his passion was music, not physics. I often think in music. I live my day to be in music. If I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. But Einstein's life changed when he was given a book on geometry. The universe could be tamed through numbers. His life work would be to control the music of the universe. See the nonsensical representation there? We've got Einstein who starts off interested in music, suddenly he gets over to doing physics and suddenly the representation representation of Einstein is somebody who's doing physics as if it's music. It's sort of like, it's nonsense. But how you would totally mess up physics is to do that. Einstein's life changed when he was given a book on geometry. The universe could be tamed through numbers. His life work would be to control the music of the universe. During his life, Einstein changed our concepts of space and time forever. Messed up. He energy, mass, and the speed of light in the most famous equation of all time. E equals MC squared. What made Einstein's brain so exceptional? Dr. Jim Al-Khalidi, like Einstein, is a physicist and is obsessed by the work of his hero. Brain specialist Dr. Mark Lithgow hunts for the secrets of creativity inside the human mind. My name is Dr. Jim Al-Khalidi. I believe Einstein's genius came from his imagination, and no man or machine can measure that. Am I right? My name is Dr. Mark Lithgow. And I believe that Einstein's genius comes from nerve cells which can be analysed. We can find out what made Einstein a genius. Am I right? So basically those two people are supposed to be scientists and they're just talking nonsense about well, how, how genius Einstein is. we can move forward now. There's a lot here. Uh, 15. Oh. As a Sky TV customer, you get our latest. Oh. What created the conscious thought? space-time in which all times coexist this ghost town is like one slice in that space-time time flows at different rates for different people at different places in the universe it's different for me it's different for you it's different for the guy over there yep so relativity means time varies across the universe gives me a little idea Scientists like Mark find a parallel concept in the human brain. Our minds can actually alter how we perceive time. Do you think that relativity is all about time, right? Well, I think this is where your world of physics meets my world of brain science. And I can honestly say... I don't know if the road is the best place for this, you know. Well, just give me two thirds. You're going to really enjoy this. Mark, look out. Mark! 
That was, that was all just utter nonsense. And I got some more. slows down when you're about to have an accident and it's true your conscious mind allows you to change your experience of time to cope with dangerous situations such as this right well, I think the thing that is to an extent true that your your mind perceives time differently at different so when you're in, in an emergency situation time sort of speeds up and you are paying more attention to your surroundings but that has nothing to do with Einstein's relativity. In Einstein's relativity, you've got clocks, and these clocks are supposed to be going at different rates. And these, and that is caused by the clocks moving around at different speeds. That person there, in that nonsense demonstration, he was not going at a different speed. He was not going at a different speed and experiencing time at a different rate. So there's no connection between what's happened there and Einstein's relativity. You do that again and you're a dead man. <laughs> now, run by me that thing about consciousness and time again, right? You can speed up or slow down our conscious experience of time depending on the situation. How incredible as it seems. So, your conscious perception of time has nothing to do with Einstein's relativity and they're trying to present a false connection between those two things. Just totally bogus. 25. Oh. So, we've just had a representation of Einstein, and Einstein's telling us he's not smart, he's just just uh, staying with questions longer, and those sort of questions he's staying with longer are childish questions. And he's thinking very long on childish questions, and basically what he came up with was nonsense. And he didn't understand it, as per my last lecture, he didn't understand what he was talking about just came up with nonsense. Let's see the next, next clip. Here's Einstein again. Let's have it. Trade on physics problems, page after page. I think and think for months and years, 99 times the conclusion is false. The hundredth time. Right, so Einstein, this representation of Einstein here is saying to you, he's thinking about something and 99 times out of 100 he's got it wrong. But one time in 100 he's right, That's nonsense. I think that's just nonsense. I think he's probably going for 100 times out of 100 that it's nonsense. He's just deluding himself that he's sometimes getting it right. And he doesn't know what he's talking about as per the last lecture, so... This is the rubbish we've got for mainstream physics. Everything, him, getting things wrong 99 times out of 100, as he admits. And then he's thinking, under some delusion, he's getting it right once in 100 times. No. No. Complete failure he is. An Einstein in all of us. If we had the opportunity, if we could concentrate that firepower... We could have that childlike ability to challenge the dogma of the day. Childlike ability. Childlike, stupid, really. 
then perhaps we too could make stunning breakthroughs in science. Professor Kaku makes a strong case for genius residing in the personality and character of the individual. Jim's argument for imagination in the neurology gains new ground. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination in circles of world. So we just had the representation of Einstein telling you uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. It's just nonsense again. If we go to what he's famous for, which is his thought experiments, then that's all coming out from his imagination. And in your imagination you can start to believe things which are nonsense. And that's what he's doing. In his imagination he's making up things that is nonsense. basis for his intellect to allow scientists to analyze his brain as he worked on mathematical problems. The primitive science of the early 50s failed to find anything exceptional. Without brain data, biographers look for clues to Einstein's genius elsewhere. Einstein's concentration was legendary. Could Einstein's genius, far from being the product of a beautiful mind, derive in fact from neurological disorder. Neurological disorder. So, could Einstein... Uh, could Einstein's uh, genius really come from neurological disorder? Really, I'd say it's stupidity comes from neurological disorder. Could Einstein's genius, far from being the product of a beautiful mind, derive, in fact, from neurological Disorder. Physicist Jim Alcalini has made the case Einstein's genius resides in his extraordinary character. But for neurophysiologist Mark Lifko, Einstein's obsessive feats of concentration point to a neurological explanation. He's come to Cambridge to meet autism expert Professor Simon Baron Cohen. So we're now, now suddenly going on to the idea that maybe Einstein had autism and if he's got this amazing concentration of power and it's coming from an abnormality and it's sort of like autism, it explains why it's all nonsense. But of course his fans are not going to want to interpret that as as uh, being stupid, they want to take it as genius. Some biographers of Einstein have focused on the fact that Einstein spoke late relative to uh, typically developing children. He wasn't speaking clearly until he was uh, four or five years old, which is years later than normal. And that he may have had. So, mentioning a uh, problem Einstein had with talking in his early years. So, once again, that's a sign of being stupid, but uh, they're trying to dismiss that. So, so not definitive that he had autism. Uh, he might have had autism. That could explain a lot why why he had all these sort of problems. So pick it up again. Spoke late relative to uh, typically developing children. He wasn't speaking clearly until he was uh, four or five years old, which is years later than normal. And that he may have had uh, this pattern of echoing of other people's speech. And these signs are seen in autism, but they're not definitive diagnostic symptoms. Mike, would you like to do a math test? Yes? Okay. I'm going to give you some numbers. Michael Agassiz is in his 30s. He is profoundly autistic. He 
cannot speak and barely recognizes language. But his concentration, like Einstein's, is astounding. So, so this concentration is probably like this for Einstein. They're not. They're thinking maybe it is. What's that? Two numbers, ab absolutely at random, um, with six digits. So they're in the hundreds of thousands, with a multiplication sign in between, and he is just multiplying the two of them together, and he's carrying all the numbers in his head. The sum Michael has done in his head is too big to fit on a conventional calculator and must be done in two parts. And the last four numbers are 7, 1, 2, 4, which are exactly the same as yours. So it's right. I have no idea how he does it. It's just an, am an amazing talent that he has. Right, an amazing talent. So I'm quite impressed. That is quite clever. Uh, he's, he's done an amazing bit of mathematics and inside his head but he's got a talent in that area and it's not necessarily means he's going to be good in other areas he's um and I, if Einstein is being represented like this then uh, you can see you don't really want somebody like this coming along and messing up your physics good at adding sums together when it's not going to give a very coherent system of physics maybe the way Einstein thinks uh, he doesn't understand what could be Einstein thinks himself I don't understand what I'm talking about but I just muddle along anyway and so your whole basis of physics is just a muddled mess and that's the way that Einstein has processed it inside his head there we go pick it up let's carry on that Einstein was autistic it sounds as though he found it quite difficult to relate to people he must have had Einstein had it difficult to relate to people so if Einstein is clever in some areas he's stupid in other areas great powers of concentration a bit like um, as Michael does but there's no test for autism it will be impossible today to prove one way or another whether Einstein was autistic even if the brain were in one piece. For Mark, putting Einstein's brain back together again is essential if he's to understand how it worked. <laughs> Meeting Thomas Harvey for the first time, Mark has an idea which may allow him to turn back the clock 50 years and rebuild Einstein's brain. These photos, which Thomas Harvey took before cutting the brain into 240 pieces, are the last witness to its physical structure. Can state-of-the-art computer graphics turn these two-dimensional images into an accurate three-dimensional <coughs> representation of what was lost? Using these photos, Mark asks computer experts to resurrect the brain as an accurate graphical model. With this model, Mark can drive home his point to Jim. Einstein's brain has major physical differences. The moment of truth. Mark downloads the computer model. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the first time that brain's been whole in 50, 50 years. 240 pieces, thousands of slices. Einstein's of brain. Together. So what can you say about it? What can you see there that might be unusual? Let me show you, Jim. This is where they... Parietal cortices are. These are okay. uh, both sides, slightly above the ears, towards the back. Mark has learned that Einstein's parietal lobes are different, as shown by Marion Diamond's work. Found in his left inferior parietal area, he had significantly more glial cells per neuron. Mark shows Jim something even more special about Einstein's parietal lobes. They're abnormally large. Abnormal. You've got an abnormal brain, and suddenly they're going to try to tell you 
abnormal abnormal means is genius really abnormal means you bit something wrong with you 15% wider than Einstein's brain I guess that's going to come from two reasons one either it was born like that you know and those parietal cortices which is the bit where it's wider actually created that or it could be the environment you know those are the areas for maths mathematical reasoning and visual spatial programming or processing it could yeah. be because he was working out those areas they actually grew larger because the brain overall wasn't any bigger than average yeah. so in the areas of the brain where he does supposed to deal with maths it's abnormal and they want to believe that's a genius so here we go this is a book about by one of the he, these are, I believe in a support of Einstein thinking Einstein's a genius and he's written a book about some of the mistakes that Einstein made he doesn't go far enough in my opinion but You've got the title of the book, Einstein's Mistakes, The Human Failings of Genius. So Einstein is associated with genius even though he's made mistakes. And this is what he says on it. Although Einstein was the greatest genius of the 20th century, many of his groundbreaking discoveries were blighted by mistakes ranging from serious errors in mathematics to bad misconceptions in physics and failures to grasp the subtleties of his own creations. Right, so you've got Einstein's brain is abnormal in the place where he does his maths and so that would explain why he's so bad at maths. Serious errors in mathematics. You've got somebody who's got a damaged brain in some way uh, this, this one this is an article on Discover uh, they're listing uh, Einstein's mistakes some of the mistakes he's made loads of mistakes so here's a chronology of Einstein's mistakes in 1905 he made a mistake in clock synchronization procedure on which Einstein based special relativity. So Einstein messed up special relativity from the very beginning. And then he's got another mistake too failure to consider Michelson and Morley experiment. Uh, state three mistake in transverse mass. Uh, multiple states in the mathematics and physics used to calculation of velocity of liquids. Uh, and mistakes in the relationship between thermal radiation and quanta of light, um, mistake in the first proof of E equals MC squared, mistakes in the second, third and fourth proofs of E equals MC squared, uh, mistake in the synchronization procedure for accelerated clocks and so forth. It keeps going on and on and he made a mistake in 1914 he makes a mistake in the fifth proof of E equals MC squared. In actual fact Einstein just keeps making mistakes when he's trying to deal with E equals MC squared and even in the year 1946 he makes a mistake in the seventh proof of E equals MC squared this, this is so say 25 is it, no, 23 of his mistakes and he just keeps making them this is, only, this is only just a few of the mistakes he's making in his maths and so forth it's just, it's just complete nonsense Einstein Einstein's mistakes, full of mistakes. I mean, back to that. Einstein's brain. Einstein's brain has an abnormality in the area where he does his maths, and so that would explain why his math is so bad. And rather than accept that he's got problems like that, they say, "Oh, it's all a genius." Being bad at maths, always a genius. Abnormal brain in where he's supposed to do maths, always a genius. So they're just trying to make the wrong conclusions every time. Everything is a mistake. And they've just built on it. Modern physics is built on nonsense.
I need to, I think picking it up from here now, coming near the end. Right, let me look at his brain a bit more. And his brain in a television documentary. It's supposed to be Einstein's brain. These are the two nutty scientists. believe he's a genius. They just want to delude themselves. So Einstein's brain has given up some of its secrets to Mark and Jim. In the battle of biology versus ideas, Jim and Mark have each scored points. Seemingly, Einstein was born with overlaps in his brain. These overlaps may have meant maths and spatial thinking were more intuitive to him. Thinking like a child. So, abnormal brain in the areas where he does maths. Basically, that's why he made so many mistakes in it. But they sort of, in this representation, they're not going to go for that. They're going to be ten. That's a genius. Let him see the world in a unique way, and his unique, perhaps autistic, level of concentration forced his brain to expand like a muscle. Extra glial cells were needed to cope with the extra demand. Yeah. Possibly help him make the mass area in the brain. More than 15% and all, all that going on, uh, he did, concentrated on really hard on the problem, and what's happened, his brain has deluded him. He's come up with delusions, and and the physics community have decided to go along with those delusions. He didn't understand what he was talking about, as explained in the previous lecture, and now the physics community have decided to go along with that. Extra glial cells were needed to cope with the extra demand. Possibly help him make the mass area in the brain more than 15% wider than normal. All these effects united to give Einstein a mind unlike any other. Perhaps the greatest mind in history. They're calling it the, great, calling it the greatest mind and it's I've explained before that it was abnormal. So they, they, they want to believe, they want to believe in genius. They just want to interpret what they got as a genius. In the future, could we preserve a genius like Einstein in something better than a jar? Imagine a brave new world where a genius brain could be copied onto silicon using microscopic robots called nanobots. This is the vision of futurologist Ray Kurzweil. By the 2020s, late 2020s, we will have completely reverse engineered the brain and understand how all the different regions work. It'll take us longer to be able to scan an entire brain and get captured every detail of someone's personality. The blood vessels in the brain go everywhere, and so if we send uh, billions of nanobots through the capillaries of the brain, they could scan everything in the brain of a specific person at very high resolution. It's just Frankenstein science now. specific person's brain and that simulation will act just like that person and if you then talk to that simulation you'd be convinced that it was that person. I'm a little worried about whether I'm talking to the real Ray or he's at home having a cup of tea. They've turned it into a joke now. They're talking about turning people into sort of robots and it's a joke so let's see how it's representate, represented in science fiction. That's how it's how what they're talking about now. This is how it's represented in fiction. It's the Terminator robot. You've created this artificial robot from humans, and it, what it wants to do is go out and exterminate all the human race. So, 
from their point of view they're having a nice little joke about what they're doing and in science fiction they've got it represented as this murderous killing robot Frankenstein joke, Frankenstein science And end up as the Terminator. They're, not, they're just nuts. Do you believe that, you know, just by looking at that, genius is, or is some, genius something else for you? It's a key moment. Has Mark won Jim round? Day by day, I've been changing my, my, my view. It's supposed to be Einstein's brain. I, I started off feeling that uh, Einstein's ideas had gone forever. I, what, what he thought of, what, what he capable of imagining was something of the past. <clears throat> These two guys are like idiots. They think Einstein's a genius. It says they got his brain brain here and it's like they're worshipping it. I mean they're not keeping my brain. I don't want idiots like this thinking I'm a genius. I don't want some idiots doing things like that to me after I'm dead. I'm not so sure now. I'm, I, I, I feel somehow that there are still maybe possibly some secrets locked inside this jar this simple glass jar holds the actual slices of einstein's gray matter that dr harvey sealed for perpetuity half a century ago shall we have a look inside yes. i don't know just somehow i feel as though we shouldn't be doing this but shouldn't be doing this Just idiots. You, you'd want to die and have idiots like that look at your brain. But any of these pieces um, would easily have their place, I think, in any museum, any art gallery throughout the world. Just because of what it represents. Einstein's brain. Removed, lost, rediscovered, analysed, and now saved forever. There you go, that, that Einstein so say treating uh, maths and physics as music and he's just screwing it up, making a mess of it. And these people look at his brain and they want to believe that something abnormal means he's a genius. And, it all, and when they point out his mistakes, they point out Einstein's mistakes, they still want to believe that he's a genius. So all the evidence of all of this, um, they still want to believe he's a genius. That's my conclusion. Thank you.